it says I am. I'm using this new beta version. Thank you for, I got two thumbs up already. And I see somebody's in here, but I don't know who. Talk in the chat. This is an open discussion. As you know, when I'm cooking in the kitchen, we talk about everything. We talk about husbands, children, families, uh, recipes, of course, things we're going to make good to eat. Um, but we talk about everything, and I want to open up with a couple things. <laughs> hey, Pie Cutie. And everybody, y'all come on in. I'm going to talk as people start filtering in. Oh, I did need to put on Twitter that I'm live, don't I? Hang on just a second. And I will get this shared so some people know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing most of the time, but today I think I might. <laughs> okay. Uh, my channel. So you see, I've got everything muted. Of course, I don't. Welcome, everybody, coming in. y'all. If y'all share this on Twitter, I'd really appreciate it. It's been a good long time since I've been on. And I'm going to tell y'all about it. And hey, Clancy. Hi, doll baby. And don't be afraid to talk in the chat. Like I said, no trolls allowed. My mods will be in here. And, you know, I have them take care of everything. I don't let anybody get picked on in my chat. It's a little bit different. This is not drama. We will talk about life issues. We'll talk about things that have happened to us that some might think is drama, but this is a drama free zone. We don't attack each other. There's no fighting in the chat and all that crap. I just, some people really enjoy that. And, and I go to channels that do that, but in this one, I kind of want everybody to be chill and relax and feel like they're at home because that's where I am. I am at home in my kitchen my happiest place. And I'm happy to have you all as my guests here. Okay. Now let me share this blooming thing. <sighs> Twitter, Twitter. And it's not let me do it the normal way. Of course, it's got to be a pain in the patootie. And it says, I'm live. So let me do a post. This is a new thing. I don't know if you all have a, uh, seen it but youtube has a different version you can go through google hangouts which is how most people do and how you have to do if you want to bring people up on the panel but this is the beta version that uh youtube has come out with i can see the chat hi icy onyx honey you're never late for dinner and you know if i haven't got this dinner done i got leftovers to help you tie it over all right he'll tie you over until this is done <laughs> so y'all just come on in i'm going uh, i gotta put this up on my twitter on my twitter why won't it do like I'm telling it to? There we go. I'm going to have to copy the link and do it over because it's not letting me on my Twitter. But we're going to talk about some st things that have been going on uh, as, before I get this started. I'm trying to let my sauce heat up. Uh, as you all know, I made sauce or gravy, <laughs> what they call Sunday sauce if you're Italian. And usually this is not working. Usually that's because it takes a little longer. You make it on Sunday and it's special. And then you have leftovers all week. And that's what we do here. I, you know, when I make something like this that takes a long time, I'll make enough to where we can eat at least two meals on it. There's just the two of us. Now, when I have my daughter here and she usually had a bunch of people with her, I didn't have to worry about leftovers. But uh, now I do. And I make sure that the leftovers that we have, everybody, that both of us like. And, uh, we can have we can have them different ways. Like I'm making meatballs and I use sausage and hamburger, and I'm gonna put the recipe in the description. It's extremely simple. But while my sauce is heating, as you can see, I added a little bit of water to it, so it wouldn't go down and scorch the pan like I did a little bit ago. My big pot that I love so much, y'all know I'm crazy over my cooking utensils. My big pot has scorched the bottom of it, so it's over there soaking. And it'll be fine because these stainless steel pots are great. Oh, well, thank you, doll baby. Uh, my hair. Hey, Seth. And hello, Puddin. Hi, doll baby. You're a vegetarian. Listen, you're a vegetarian. You can eat this. And that's one, one of the reasons I changed my recipe for sauce. And I'll make, uh, I don't make meat sauce. I make it vegetarian because my daughter doesn't eat any meat. And, uh, and she's, Lord, she's lost so much weight. She's so, in such good shape. Of course, she's biking 10 miles a day. She lives in Mexico, so she's on a bike, walking, doing things. And, of course, working hard and eating healthy. Where she is, they eat really, really healthy. And uh, she's in uh, a little place called Tulum. I don't know if you know where it is, but um, it's beautiful. But, anyway, 
So I make a vegetarian sauce and then I'll make my meatballs to go in it if everybody eats meat in the house, which right now they do. But that way, if I want to send her some, like do a care package, which I have done before, I'll, I'll send it to her. But it doesn't have doesn't have anything that she has a dietary restriction on. And she doesn't eat tomatoes really a whole lot, but every now and then she'll crave mama sauce. So that's how kids are. Let me see who goes in the chat. Um, oh, I was going to tell you, Onyx, I decided to curl it and put it on top of my head today. It'll probably be sweating and down and one of them came out and I just left it. But um, when I feel good, I like to curl my hair. I don't curl it all the time because I don't want it to break off or anything like that. And, um, you know, I don't use a blow dryer, so it takes a little bit longer. But, yeah, I like to curl it, bow it up, and then I'll put just the front up and stuff like that. But it's out of my way, so it's kind of hard to hard to handle sometimes. Um, this is, as you all know, three years ago this January, I had gastric sleeve surgery and I lost a bunch of weight. And um, in fact, I think, you know, who I've talked about, the lady in our community who had, she had a different type of bypass surgery, but I've heard everything from, oh, she just had a hernia surgery. She's lying. She's faking it. No, she's not. Come on. I saw the pictures of exactly where her incisions were. They were exactly where mine were. Mine was laparoscopic too. And um, you know what? People were saying, I don't say, I don't see why people should call her brave. Well, going into any surgery is scary. And admitting that you can't do something on your own is a brave thing to do. You know, if you know that you have a weakness, like say you're an alcoholic and you, you know, throw everything out of your house and that's got alcohol in it. And, you know, you move away from all your friends and then you go into a rehab center where there's no alcohol. People are like, well, that's not brave. That's not brave. It's hard. And it's an uphill climb. And this is going to be an uphill climb for her. The surgery is the easy part, to be honest. It was all oh, you take these way out. Bullshit. Let me tell you, I throw up every day. Uh, I live on Finnegan and Zofran because I am so nauseous. And, you know, we may not be getting along. You know, we don't see eye to eye on everything. I don't see eye to eye with ever, anybody. We all have differences. But, you know, some people can do it with diet and exercise alone. And some people need a little extra push. And I don't want to be mean to anybody who's trying to do better for themselves. Because we've all got flaws and we've all got faults. And um, I don't hold grudges forever. And, you know, so I hope she does well. I'm not going to say she's the bravest person in the world. I did it. I'm not that brave. You know, I, I don't consider myself that brave. You know, I'm big chicken shit when it comes to a lot of stuff. And I've gone through a lot of health things. But this was, I did it to make myself uh, less brittle. I'm a type 1 brittle diabetic. And uh, it helped. And I've lost I've lost a good amount of weight. I've lost over 200 pounds. And people were like, really? And I'm like, yeah, and I'm still fat. And, oh, by the way, I want to address something else. Somebody said they were making fun of me having a rolling stool. Okay, I have a severe RA, moderate to severe RA. I take chemo for it. I take chemo for it. And this rolling stool, honey, well, I got my apron pulled down. But this rolling stool has been a godsend. So if you want to make fun of me and you want to say that I don't stand up my videos, I can stand up in my videos. I may have to have my hand on the stove. But you know what? I've had more people ask me where I ordered this from because there are other people who need it too. Okay. So uh, let me readjust this. Get back on my stool. But you'll see. I, yeah, I'm, I'm smaller than I was. I'm not skinny. Nobody, I, don't, I know of maybe one person who said they got down to like 140 pounds. Most people still are a little chubby after they, they lose the weight that they, they wanted. I don't care as long as I'm healthy, as long as I feel good, as long as I can get around. And that's what I'm trying to do. And I don't want to knock her for for trying trying to do it any way she can. Okay? And um, there's another thing I wanted to talk about. Y'all, my sauce is warming up, so I'm about ready to make these damn meatballs. Um, let's see. Oh, you were talking about something else in the chat. I must have lost the track. Hey, Penny. Thank you for, for the likes. Okay. One other thing is um, 
Somebody got mad at me because, well, I got a little upset and I said, I, I put some harsh truth out and she didn't like it very much. And she, she made a crack about my age. I am 48 years old. I turned 48 this September and I've tried Botox. I had the first session was fine. Second session, I had the worst headache I've ever had in my entire life. Like from here all the way back to the back of my head. And, you know, you can put it around. They put it like different places in your head to help with migraines. I had the worst headache for over four weeks. Like literally, I could not open my eyes. I, it was it was insanity. And so I can't use it anymore. They were like, oh, you use Botox and fillers and all this. And they're saying that I'm lying about my age. Oh, come on. Look at my face. I'm moisturized every day. I don't use soap on my face. I take care of it. And, you know, and I wear good makeup, good quality makeup. And there's high end and low end. Y'all know I like to mix. But, you know, to insult a woman, see, Botox is gone. Uh, to insult a woman and use her age, that's tacky. Okay, and it's just tacky. And I'm proud of my age. I don't lie about it. I don't have to. But anyway, if anybody else has any questions about anything, and yeah, you know, because things keep going around and around and around, I'm like, uh, that's just not right. And I wanted to clear things up. So, and I'm not a drama channel, but I did want to say my piece on that. And I think I'm gonna take my ring off. This is, if you notice, I have the set, and I have a bracelet too. But I think I got enough bracelets on. Um, my husband's. Is very very good to be on the jewelry so anyway um hey lisa hi doll baby i love you hello elizabeth oh thank you you know what all of you all are beautiful there's my d oh i'm so happy to see everybody coming in you all are wonderful people and like i said if you'll share the share the live stream i'd really appreciate it and i've got my nightmare before christmas mug here as you can see I'm holding it with my left hand so you can see the writing in it. See? How cute is that? My lipstick comes off on a little bit. Okay, what we're starting out with, we're going to have a pound of sausage. Now, I get good sausage. I don't like, you know, I get guanis or, you know, um, if you can go to Tennessee, get, get DeFord Meats. They are so good. And, and I know the ex-wife of the owner. <laughs> She's a wonderful person. And as you can see, I'm just taking my clean hand. My hands are clean. And uh, squishing. Now, I'm going to take hamburger. It's about a pound and a half. And I thought it out. And as you can see, it's in a Ziploc bag because I always buy a hamburger when it's on sale and in bulk. And that's just a smart thing to do. I don't know why anybody would, you know, buy it any other way. You know, if you've been a housewife or, you know, a wife or mother, whatever, or you just like to cook for yourself, you know, you buy it when it's, when it's the most economical. Economical. But, uh... You add that together. It's about a pound and a half of hamburger that I have in this bag. And I don't want to pour it in all in there because there's a little bit of liquid in it. A little bit of blood. I don't think we want our meatballs to be too liquidy. So, and I try to get as low a fat hamburger as I possibly can because the sausage has its own fats in it. Now, this sausage obviously is seasoned. So, I'm not going to add any sage to this. But if I had like fresh ground pork, I would add sage and salt and all the good stuff that we put into it. And I'm squishing. This is squishing. I'm playing with my food. Let me see. Oh, honey, Clancy, they do. I have heard that, uh, y'all know about my evil seven tweets, that I made the woman suicidal, that I have done this and done that awful stuff. And I'm like, that's just crazy. I haven't even been on except for uh, in a couple streams. And, you know, I comment and I've rarely gone on panel. And when we did, it was all a good time. It wasn't fighting. I don't get on there and fight with us and do all sorts of nonsense. I, you know, I did the one time. You see what happened. <laughs> so I ain't doing that no more. Oh, Lord. Okay. Now, as you know, I keep my wet. It's slightly damp. Old dish towel to wipe my hands off on. It's got uh, soapy water with a little bit of bleach. So I'm wearing white, but I'm not worried about it. <laughs> uh, everybody say hi to everybody else listen there's lots of people on, in here that have channels you join go look check them out sub lisa has a good one that's adult 
and <laughs> she and Ada's have adult conversations. So wear your ear earphones if you've got kids around. Um, let's see, D. Everybody, I think just about everybody in here, Puddin doesn't. I'm trying to talk her into it. Um, but hey, sweet meadow, hi Irene, and you know, and blocks, and um, I don't. <sighs> I don't have the link. Stephanie, your mod, put the link to that uh, to the blog about about borderline. It's a personal blog. It talks about uh, it's a person that has borderline personality disorder, and it's not and explains that yes, there are symptoms that are hard to deal with, but it's not the end of the world to get that diagnosis. And it's a wonderful blog. And I read it and I was like, oh, the writer's voice is absolutely wonderful. Dead on accurate with the symptoms and descriptions and the treatments and how it works. So, uh, Steph, if you'll put that put that up, Steph. Yeah, put the blog up. Put the link to it so everybody can. Y'all go check the, her blog out once she's go put up. All right, now we got the hamburger and the sausage mixed up. Like I say, this is so easy. I mean, it's child's play. <laughs> Steve, I'm sorry. I didn't call you ahead of time. I get a spanking. I'm sorry. Thank you, Linda. I appreciate that. Now, I'm going, well, if I can. All right, here we go. So far, because I always forget to tell you how much I'm using if I don't have it written down. So, We've got one pound of sausage. We've got a pound and a half of hamburger. I'm gonna. I use onion powder, and I use about uh, a tablespoon. Let me guesstimate. I find if I use real real onions cut up into small pieces, they will fall apart unless you fry them first. And I don't want to do that. You know, a lot of times because I try to keep the fat low, if I fry them ahead of time, I have to add like some olive oil to it. I don't want to do that. This is much easier. This is an easier, simpler method. And I like playing with my food, but I don't like wasting time or adding extra calories because as you can see, I don't need any. Okay, here's a tablespoon of onion powder. Mm. I made Swedish meatballs the other day and I did put a lot of onion in that and it wasn't powder and they were so good. My husband was like, uh, can we have that again? I said, sure. I just made more meatballs. Okay, the onion powder, wait, where's my garlic powder? There we go. We're going to use the same amount, tablespoon. Let's see, anybody else come in? Y'all, if, if you're lurking and you're not talking, come on in and say hi. Nobody bites. I don't want anybody biting here. And there you go. There's a tablespoon of garlic powder. And you can use, you can use fresh garlic if you want to squeeze the garlic, like in the garlic press. I've done that. It doesn't really make it fall apart. But, um, you have to guess and make how much, how strong your garlic is. Like you can use one, one or two cloves in one recipe with the same amount of meat, the same amount of spices, and then the next time it's too strong. So it just depends. All right, next, uh, half tablespoon of salt. See, I'm grabbing the wrong stuff. I'm anticipating things wrong. That's why I put the recipe in the description, and that's why I make sure that I actually follow a recipe because usually when I make these, I just throw shit together. Y'all know how it is when you're a mom and you've made the same thing over and over and again. <sighs> you don't worry about exact measurements. Where where Rosie is? I have not been awake to see Rosie. Hi, Maya. Yes, I did, Maya, and she's a doll baby. She DM'd me and we, she is just sweet as pie. Honestly, thank you so much. Um, Maya sent one of her relatives over and said that I was, she told her, she said, you need to follow her on Twitter. <laughs> and we've had just a nice little conversation. Um, okay, with black pepper. Now, black pepper is one of those things that you can use a lot of if you really, really like it or, you know, you can back off on it. So this is my preference. I use a half a tablespoon. And notice that I'm using all tablespoons in this because you can keep things even, whole, half, Fourth. So if I'm using tablespoons and not teaspoons, then I keep it keep it right in my head. Okay, there's the black pepper. We need oregano. I'm about out of oregano. I'm starting to panic. You know how I am about if I don't have like at least four boxes of butter. Well, oregano is about the same thing in this house. 
And I'm going, oh, I have enough. But my honey's going to have to pick some more up. I think he's running out to the store later on after the football game's off. Okay. And then basil. Where's my basil? Do, do, do. There they are. Basil leaves. And I use about half a tablespoon of the basil. I don't want my basil to override the oregano. I want that to be the main flavor. And um, sweetest meatballs. Sweetest meatballs. Have you seen my baseball? That's what I sounded like. We were laughing the whole time at when I had a root canal. And uh, my husband was like, have you seen my baseball? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> because I could not talk. <laughs> it was bad. I, I wanted to tell you where I've been. Because I have not posted a video. Now, all I'm going to do is some squish. I don't put this in the in the mixing bowl with my hook in the, you know, on the KitchenAid. I'm not going to mess anything up like that when I can do it by hand. Just as easy as long as my hands aren't sore. Now, my hands are sore because the RA sets my hands and it does do a number on me. But if I can do this, it's very relaxing. And it mixes it good and it, you know, it's just very cathartic. Anyway, what happened was I was in a flare. I don't know if you saw my last video where I was making the reason I got two more to make. They'll, they'll get there before Christmas, hopefully. <laughs> I'm not normally a procrastinator, but... Anyway, so I made that video, and I got into a flare. It got to where I used my hands a lot. It was pretty hard with the wire and things like that. So I went into a flare, and um, it was both with fibromyalgia and the RA. So it kind of knocked me on my butt. And as you know, I don't use any opioids or anything like that, but I did use Kratom, and oh, my God, it saved me. So I got that, had the flare, and then I got the crud. You know, it wasn't really the flu. It was just, uh, I'm dying. And it turned into a sinus infection. <laughs> sinus infection ended up with me having to have a root canal. And I think I just started talking normally, um, maybe last week. But I was really worn out and tired. And so when I'm worn out and tired, I'm not going to overdo it, you know, to get rid. I have done more in the last two days than I've done in the last month. And I'm really excited about it. And it helps with my stool. I can do stuff in the kitchen. I can just slide all over the place. So, um, you know, that's where I've been. And you've seen me, I'm sure, in like uh, Power Clips Hush Chat. I was in Vinny G's uh, morning our time with Mandy and Vinny and several other people. I can't remember who I was in there. I was on a with all of them. But, um, you know, as I've gotten to feeling better, I have, you know, started joining in on stuff. And, yes, I have gotten to some some tips just by writing, but I'm not going to get up. I had decided that after watching everything that I've seen in the last little bit, two people on a panel screaming at each other solves nothing. Nothing. Nobody ever wins. Nobody ever look. They all lose because it's just too much. So I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'll go on happy panels. That's it. Okay. Now I'm going to keep this one. <laughs> because I'm going to make meatballs stir stir make sure it's good and hot now if you want to make these the traditional way you would put peppers and onions in a skillet I'm allergic to peppers uh, my husband loves them he eats ghost peppers and reapers and all this other stuff he literally could just eat them and you know they will end up bothering his stomach after a while but it doesn't bother him to eat it and I can't have it. I can't, I can't smell some of the things. I buy them all these hot powders to add to stuff. I can't get near them. But anyway, we're going to pinch this up a meatball. Okay. See, that's why I didn't wipe my hand off. And I don't put, but like I say, you would put them in a skillet with onions and peppers. And, you know, you might, you might just put hamburger and the meatballs and then like have a really good sausage in casing or out of casing. I've seen it done both ways. And, you know, it just adds to it. And I love it. Now, today I am not doing the doing the regular skillet thing. This is the easy way. And uh, I had an Italian couple that lived next door to me. I guess I was 19. Yeah, I think I was 19. Anyway, she showed me how to make it both ways. And this is the simple way. And since it's just the two of us, we're going to do it like this. I'm making lots of meatballs because later on in the week, the reason I make so much of this, later on in the week, um, we will have meatballs on subs. I eat meatballs just by themselves. 
Yeah, I don't have to have pasta or anything like that. If you want to just lay it over, you know, some good Italian bread, it's always good. You know, there's all sorts of different ways. And you know what? If I make them and it's, I think eh, it's too much, throw them in a Ziploc bag after they're cooked and, you know, put them in the freezer. You can always have them later on. So I'll make about that size, about the size of a golf ball. And drop. Like I say, play with your food. You never know. And if you're single, because I know we have young people on here and we we have divorced people and people without kids and, you know, you may be just fixing for yourself. You can cook the meatballs, then freeze them, or you can freeze them before you cook them. Either way. Nom, 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 nom. I don't want that to splash too much. I don't want to get it on my sweater. Let's see what's going. Oh, thank you, Irene. It's, you know, I think the weather really did. The weather is what brought on the crud. Because my husband carried it home, I think, from his office. He swears he didn't do it, but I think he did. I catch everything. You know, when you're on the medicines I am, it takes your immune system. and goes, Pfft. So, you know, I don't have, I can't fight off stuff like that. Like, I, we use thieves all like crazy. I'm all into natural stuff. I don't want to have to take a bunch of antibiotics because I always do when, you know, I took three rounds to get my jaw and all of this. Oh, my God. It took, if they had to give me. Two rounds before and one round after my root canal because it was just. And then when they did it, I got TMJ. They had uh, they had the things holding my jaw up, but it took so long and it was way in the back. And you know these medicines they're they're horrible on your teeth. I mean, and I have like a super expensive electric toothbrush and prescription toothpaste and brush twice a day and after meals and I floss all the time. <sighs> It's the medicines. It causes bone loss. You know, some I've used a scoop, but my ice cream scoop, it doesn't have one of the little things that goes. It's the old fashioned one. So it's just as easy to do this. And I'm eyeballing them. I'm pretty good at eyeballing meatballs. I could eyeball a ball. <laughs> my husband's going hollering here and goes, shut up, man. <laughs> oh, you just come on over and eat. And Susan, you come too. How do I keep them from falling apart? First of all, I never put bread in my meatballs. That's a cheater. I mean, if you've got 100 people to feed and you only got a pound of hamburger, I mean, you can be Jesus with the loaves and fishes if you want with all the crumbs and, you know, whatever. I don't put any bread in mine. And I keep the fat low and I drop them into simmering sauce and they go right together. It's real easy. And when I make Swedish meatballs and I've got the... You know, the base on that is like a creamy mushroom. I use cream, creamy mushroom soup in mine and then a whole lot of other stuff because, you know, I've got to diddle and do that and perk it up, make it mine, you know. And when I have that going, I will, I usually put those in the crock pot because it cooks, cooks slow. But this last time, I don't know, I think my crock pot temperature's off. I just transferred them over to the, to the stove, put them in my pot and uh, cooked them that way. And I'll show you. And you don't want to stir until, like, you never stir hard. But, um, you know, you want to get to the bottom. And you want to just gently stir it. And that way you don't tear your meatballs up. And I always use a wooden spoon. I never use a sharp-handled spoon from, like, just a regular tablespoon that you would have. Or even, like, one of my cooking spoons. No, I use a wooden spoon. Believe me, wooden spoons don't react with the acidity. And, because, uh, you know, there's a lot of acid in these tomatoes. So that way, don't change the taste. Now, some people may say, oh, I never taste anything different when I use a stainless spoon or, you know, I use plastic. I, I just don't, well, I don't know. It's in my head, probably. It's probably all a lot of crap that I've told myself enough times to where I actually believe it. But my kitchen, my rules, right? <laughs> you make up your own stuff. Oh, my, these Swedish meatballs were good. My husband was like, mm, you outdid yourself. And I was like, I know, wasn't it good? <laughs> oh, let's see. Okay, Lisa, you come on back. Hurry. I have the best mods. Thank you. I don't need to talk to the dog today. He's got enough going on, don't you think? He doesn't need to be worried about me and my meatballs. <laughs> but 
Thank you, Steve. I think everybody's taking ND. <laughs> I'll take it turns. Just, just blocking permanently. It's, I don't need people like that in here, and we don't need to bother with them, do we? That's just, just enough trouble to make you want to scream. Now, as you can see, I've got this smaller pot, like I said, the big pot's over there soaking. Um, this smaller pot, they're starting to come to the top. Do you see them? You just barely see them. So I'm just gonna put a few more in here. So I don't overload it, because I do want to be able to, to stir it. But then I think the rest of these, I'll set aside for right now, and then I'll just make beet balls, put them in a bag, freeze them. And that way, next time I don't have to do it. I came out with five, six, seven hefty bags worth. And I, I usually put like a, one meal's worth of sauce in a hefty bag, usually about a third of the way up, and then freeze it. I can can it, but I'm waiting on my pressure canner. Let's see how many we got in here now. Okay, we're getting good. I think we've got room for a few more. See how see how nice they are? Let me, let me see if it'll quit dripping. Okay, you see? They don't fall apart. Mm, that's gonna be so good. And, and you know, there's, there's so many, I have so much trouble trying to like wait because I love these. And I can only, after having the surgery, I get about two meatballs, <laughs> that's all. But as I sit here and watch them, I'm like, oh, I could just eat one right now. This is one of those things that when you cook it, you're starving by the end. Now most of the time when I cook, I'm not hungry afterwards because, you know, you sample things and you mess with it long enough and it takes you a little while before you're really wanting to eat. This is not like that because it's a quick preparation. And I, and I so I'm always like, I'm going to steal one. I steal a meatball. <laughs> I'm not going to. And I think my husband wanted this over some pasta, which is fine. I think that's about enough. I'm not going to put any more in there. I don't want to overload it. Okay. Let's get that out of the way. Now, this is cooking. And um, I think the next video that I'm going to do is seasoning the new iron, the iron skillets that I've had sitting there for a month. Thank you to everyone who, who said, go get you some iron skillets because I kept bitching because I didn't have any and couldn't find mine. I used to have the ones that were shaped like corn and you poured the batter in and it you turned it over and it was like a half corn and it was cornbread that you made in that. And you know, I had some, I had some different ones and <laughs> I just hate I lost them, but I'm so grateful that you all thought enough of me to <laughs> super chat me money for that. Uh, usually I did buy those. Anything else I ever get, some people ask, you know, what my channel, if they donate or if they, you know, I don't, my PayPal is Mama Best World, you know, it's paypal.com slash Mama Best World, I think. I don't advertise a lot. Now, it, and if I get a super chat, it all goes, everything that I make goes to our dog rescue because uh, the lady that runs it, she does it all on her own and she doesn't get any government assistance. She literally works all day and there are nights that she goes running around all night long it's called operation underdog and um she's under she's on facebook under west virginia lost and found pets and you have to ask to join the group but uh because a lot of people they put their personal details out y'all know how doxing goes but if you've been following me and been a sub for a good while you'll remember when my when my baby spanky they all got, they all decided to take a trip. The electric fence didn't work and he and Brian and Merlot were all out in the road and I was actually on a live stream and usually when I let them out, you know, they stay right in the yard because they've got electric fence, it's underground. And I was like, well, I guess I'm going to have to find my dog. You know, I was like, where could they have gone? We've got woods all around. So I figured they chased a rabbit or something like that. And uh, yeah, I, we could not find... Marlet came back and he's sitting here snoring. He's getting a trim later. But the Dotsons, my wieners, we could not find. I was frantic. I was calling everybody. I was emailing. I was I was on Facebook. I was on every group. I was on just everywhere. And a lady, a car hit, hit Spanky. And 
he was over on the side of the road. I don't know whether he crawled over there, but Brian was beside him and looked like he was sleeping. They thought Brian was dead too. But the lady, uh, the girl who hit the dogs, she took them to her mother. I think, I think that's how it is. I think that's how the relation went, but at least she was good enough to stop. And, you know, she was like, mom, what do I do? And I think she had to go out of town somewhere, but um, Missy who runs, it's, it's West Virginia lost and found pets on Facebook. And her name is Missy Omar. And let me tell you, she, she called everybody. I was calling everybody. And then she found where the lady had posted that there was, that she had found two dogs. One was passed away and one was okay. She thought, but needed to go to the vet. And Missy saw it, couldn't get in touch with her, got in touch with the daughter's boyfriend's friend. <laughs> and, and I mean, it was like, it was serious detective work to find my babies. And, you know, and they've always had collars with their names on them. I don't, I, anyway, I was blessed to get Brian back. You know, he, he has mourned, Marlott has mourned, I we've mourned. And, uh, but so anything I get, like, you know, because the AdSense comes in slowly, but, you know, and any super chat goes into that or anything that goes to my PayPal, it all goes to the rescue. And I'm trying to get enough this this time for, you have to have $100 to pull it out. And I haven't had $100 in there except for what you all sent for the skills. And I think that was like 35 and I did do that. But people ask, you know, and it's a fair question because there are a lot of, you know, there are some people who YouTube, for themselves and you know that's how they make their money and I that hey that's fine some people do it as a hobby some people do it like me to give to a charity um I'm blessed that you know I don't this isn't an occupation this is a joy you know and I just appreciate anyone who does that yeah um wait a minute hi Dory hey doll baby you need to DM me I can never okay <laughs> Y'all, Twitter is screwy. Um, I cannot get, I cannot see anything that's a sensitive image or talk because it won't validate to my phone for some reason. That's how, it, and it did the same thing with my original Mama Best World at Twitter account. Now it's Mama Best World 1 at Twitter. And I don't know, it's saying sending SMS code and it's got my right phone number. <laughs> Never sends it. I've emailed <laughs> I've done everything I can do. Twitter just does not want to let me be an adult. So I'm just a big kid. <laughs> oh, Lord. Thank you, Steph. But, um, yeah, hit, hit the thumbs up for me and uh, share the stream. We're going to be sitting here while these cook because I, I want you to see how they look afterwards. And I've got trigger finger going on. If you've got autoimmune disorders, you'll know what trigger finger is. And when you use your hands a lot... It does this, especially if your potassium's low. Magnesium, and I need to get some magnesium. That reminds me. Honey, put magnesium on the list because I need to get some of that. Uh, when potassium magnesium go down, which they do when you're, especially if you're a diabetic too, and um, I get trigger finger using my hands a bunch, and it's just like, it makes it like a gun, and you can't, it, it's stiff, hard. You can't bend it, and it hurts. <laughs> so... Let's see. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you for reminding everyone. Irene, you're not blocked, honey. I see you. Irene, you know you're a welcome guest here. <laughs> you fell asleep. You know, Puddin always falls asleep, she says, listening to my streams. I guess I'm not, she says, but you're not boring. It's just your voice. And I, I've had other people tell me that too, but I listen to other people. So I listen to Rosie and go right to sleep and I can listen to who else is it? I, if you're screaming, I can't do it. But um, the Slaytons, I'll put it on autoplay and have the Slayton sisters on one or the other. It doesn't matter. But they talk so soft and slow and easy going and it, it will, it'll make you drop off. And, uh, <laughs> so I totally understand. Irene, I don't think anybody timed you out, honey. Um, thank you, Susan. But 
343221. Hello. Oh, from Wales. That is wonderful. I can't read anything, any Wales signs. I was, uh, we went through Wales. I was 18 and, you know, we were trying to see everything. And the names, I was like, huh? So you have to be native to understand Welsh language. And I, I just, I was fascinated by it, but it's beautiful. I love, I, I love, you know, Scotland and Wales and Ireland, both North and the Republic. And uh, of course, all over England, everybody should travel. The more you travel, the more experienced you become. I think the more you learn that people are the same everywhere. You know, we might have different skin tones. We might have different accents. We might speak in different languages, but people are people wherever we go. And um, hi, Spammy from England. <laughs> Maya's from New England, Massachusetts. And Welsh is your first language. See, and I find that it, it's just wonderful to hear a different tongue. I want to learn. I want to learn the Irish. I want to learn Gaelic. And I get my tongue all twisted. <laughs> But I try, and um, I'm learning to speak a little bit of Vietnamese. There's a there's an app that teaches you how to say everything, and I think it, it, that's really hard. <laughs> so, but I'm trying because I go when I go get my nails done, I want to know what they're saying about me. But and yes, your Steph's accent is truly British. I no, my I'm actually from southwestern Virginia, and our accents. When I moved to Louisiana, it, we were in um, Shreveport. My husband was stationed at Barksdale, my first husband. And their accent was almost identical to Southwest Virginia, which is also extremely similar to South Carolina. There are pockets that have different accents, but those three seem to be right together. And if I go to Atlanta, my accent will actually adapt because when I, I have an ear, so if someone's around me with a specific accent, I'll end up picking it up and not even thinking about it. Even if it's a Southern accent, it'll be slightly different. But um, where, I, where I was raised, I could tell you what county someone was from by listening to them speak, and that's no lie. And uh, it's kind of funny how little nuances, you know, one word here, you know, the way you say something. You know, um, I don't know if y'all watch anybody on the um, in the boy, but Vinny and Burks were arguing. <laughs> Vinny was calling it a plethora, and Burks went crazy and he said, It's not plethora, it's plethora. And he's right, actually, it is a plethora. But Vinny's like, Oh, okay, I'll say it the way I want. <laughs> I was like, Oh my god, that's so funny <laughs> because every time I'd hear Vinny say that, I'd be like, No, it's a plethora, but and I'm kind of like. A little ICD about spelling and grammar. So uh, even if with even if I have an accent, I try to use the proper, you know, verbs and you know, make sure that I don't sound like I'm totally, you know, have a third grade third grade education or something like that. <laughs> but yeah, Steph, it's easy. It's easy to slide into another uh, another Southern dialect. Like there's the Magnolia one, which is from lower South Carolina and, um, you know, like the Charleston and Savannah. They each have slight differences. Charleston and Savannah do. But um, it's close. But to a trained ear, you can hear it. It's really cool. I love it. And if you want to teach me how to speak Welsh, um, three, two, three, I will be more than happy to be a student. And I would I would love it. I really would. Y'all are Tennessee, Georgia, and Kentucky, but I grew up in Texas. Well, which accent did you pick up? Because your mommy and daddy would have, you know, like a Tennessee accent or Kentucky. And then, you know, if you're in Texas, do you have the Texas accent? Or do you have uh, the more central, eastern? I want to hear your... Uh, your Bostonian accent, you know, we always, they always say, you know, I pop the car around the yard. But most of the people that I know that were raised in Boston, they have a cleaner accent than that. Like, um, you heard Mark, Mark Wahlberg, all the Wahlbergers, they have a slight Boston accent that you can hear. Now, they've ha had Hollywood trained out 
you know, they've they've been given a more neutral accent, I guess you call it. But um, yeah, most people I know, I think Rose is from Boston, so hers too. Let's see. Stewie, hello. <laughs> you are a doll baby. Oh, I love my Stewie. He get, I get in trouble on Stewie's clips. I'll be honest with you. My, if you see my name in Stewie's title, <laughs> he's going to get a lot of views because people are always like, what in the God is in God's green earth is she going to say? Or who is she arguing with? And I try, I try hard not to argue. I really do. But people do stuff and it makes me mad. And I'm like, nah, 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 nah. and then I'm like, oh, shit, I can't delete it. <laughs> but I have deleted quite a few in the last couple of days because it's been a little crazy. I think everybody went nuts this weekend. But um, but I love my Stewie. He's always sweet to me. You know, see, I'm having the see it. It's doing again. So, uh, yeah, it's a pain in the butt. But oh, and I forgot. Um. Dying to Live, he's Patrick, he's my buddy. He has been with me since I first got on Twitter before I even, I think I was just starting to watch YouTube. And uh, he thought I was Bella Thorne or somebody, I forget, because he didn't, uh, you know, because my hair is real red and, you know, pale skin. And I was using a different different picture than I use now. Because uh, the one I use now, I just snapped on the couch. It's just me. No Filters. I don't do filters and all that nonsense. If because if you see me on the street, I want you to recognize me. But um, he's been so nice to me since the beginning, and he's always saying "f bomb for Patrick." So hashtag "f bomb for Patrick." Fuck it. <laughs> there it is, Patrick. There's your f bomb. So um, yeah, it's the Bella Thor thing. I'm like, okay, she's way better looking than I am, and she sure as hell is a lot better shape. And a lot younger, but yeah. After that, after we started talking on Twitter, we've been friends ever since. And if I screw up, he tells me. And that's what good friends do. You know, I'm not perfect. I can be a real asshole. I know, such a surprise. <laughs> if you haven't done anything to me, and I'm just getting to know you, or you know, we've been friends a long time, and you know, even if we've had some ups and downs, I try to be good to people, and I usually don't get really ugly. You know, like I said. And somebody didn't believe this either, that my husband has seen me lose my shit three times in the last probably 10 years. But in the last year, I've gotten very angry and popped off on social media. And I got to learn to I got to learn to do better on that. But um, <laughs> but yeah, Patrick always gets an F-bomb in my videos. I guess it makes them more, you know, I never have to restrict mine except for when we've had some sensitive topics, but uh, yeah, he's always fun. Let's see, Susan, Mine was born in West Roxbury, so she has the Pacifica and the Harvard Yard. <laughs> you don't have that because I was born in North Boston. I, see, now you know the difference in a North and South Boston accent, and that's so cool. You all need, when I put it this through Hangout sometime, y'all need to come in here and we'll hear the difference in your accents. We'll listen to it. Irene, it's called trigger finger. And um, mine started to happen when my potassium and magnesium gets low, which they do because I'm a type one diabetic and I'm real brittle. And then I have RA and I have fibro. And what it does is the muscle just seizes up. And for some reason it hits your first finger and it'll hit underneath uh, in my, on my right foot, usually underneath the uh, arch of my foot. And it feels like that muscle's just being pulled out. And then I have to stand up and stretch, just like with the trigger finger, I have to do this. So you need to go have your blood work done and ask, tell them that you've got that happening and ask if, you know, your potassium is low. They'll, it's, it's a real easy blood test. And when you get the results back, see what's low. Let's see. Yeah, the sauce is simmering good now. Look at them bubbles. That's going to be so good and thick. See, it's a little water now. Oh, crap, it's doing this. Um, and I just took some potassium, so it hasn't had a chance to go in uh, to get to help me. But you see, I added water to the sauce, so it's nice and tomatoey, and the the it'll thicken up, and then these meatballs will be perfect. Oh, so pretty, so 
pretty. I need to make sauce on camera sometime. It takes, I'll have to make a video, do it a video, so because you'll have to have clips through it because it takes, my sauce takes about six hours, six to eight hours to make and then it has to cool and then I usually warm it up and let it simmer a little bit again and then cool it down and then I put it in my bags. But yeah, I need to do that. Hey, Lisa. I'm the sweetest one. I'm not sweet all the time, though. I'm afraid I, I can be ugly. I, I try. You know, I my thank you. A lot of people seem to forget that. They're like, oh, you guys are professional. She's, I'm, I'm not a professional on here. Um, this is not my office. Nobody's paying me. <laughs> and say what or what. I shouldn't say some of the things that I say. And I know that. And I shouldn't uh, let things affect me. You know, but I am human. It doesn't matter what profession you're in. You're going to have, you know, all the range of emotions. And I'll be honest, I've been a little depressed um, from being sick so long. It's just kind of got me down over the last little bit. But I'm coming through it. <laughs> Listen to that sauce. Tell me that's not good. <laughs> yeah, that will be fun, Ma. We've got to get y'all up here. Is D here? Hi, Francis Lamagina. <laughs> Is it Lamagia or Lamagia? I don't know how to pronounce that. I have to get you on the panel and we'll get you to say your name so I know how to say it. But uh, you made chili and rice today. Yum. Oh my gosh. I made a big old pot of chili beans. I used about two pounds of hamburger in it too. And I had, my husband had had probably a glass of wine out of a bottle and he didn't really care for it. It was a, it was a good, it was a red. It was supposed to be good. I didn't have any of it, but he just said, eh, it's not to my taste. I'm like, okay. Cause he likes it a little sweet, and a little dry. It has to be right in between. And I think this was a Merlot, but anyway, I said, well, shit, I'm not wasting that. So I took it off and I poured it in the chili beans. Those are the best damn chili beans you have ever eaten in your life. Make your chili beans and then pour about half a bottle of red wine in it. Oh my God, the taste was unreal. It just, oh, the, between the cumin and the red wine, I think really touched and made it awesome. It was just delicious. So, but yeah, put some wine in. <laughs> I need to make some rice pudding. That makes me remember that. Let's see. Oh, you got to go, Lisa. Okay, honey. Love you. Everybody go listen, sub to Lisa's channel if you're not already subbed. And if uh and she comes on I think three times a week. And I try to catch it. Sometimes I go to sleep early, you know. But and I miss people. And I love them, but I miss them. So I try to watch later. Oh, y'all live close to each other. Hey Steve, you need to get your butt on the road. Come on down here. You can have dinner. You can be here by dinner time. Irene said when I couldn't type before, I was trying to tell you that I'm in the process of adopting a oh, oh, that'll be four dogs. Oh yay, good. Adopt, don't shop, adopt, don't shop, don't breathe. <laughs> I'm so happy. Yay, what kind are you gonna get? Your mom made chili and rice. Oh see, we do chili beans. But I like chili with rice, too. I, I love it. It's just um, beans are a protein, and the rice is a carb. So uh, I got to go with beans. But then we suffer for it, or I suffer for it, because everybody in the house, the dogs always get a little bit. And I know we're not supposed to feed the dogs what we eat. But they get the, a little bit of the hamburger, and they think they're special, because they are. But, yeah, I suffer. Mm, but chili and rice sounds good. Lisa, I'll try to stop in, honey, on your live stream. <gasps> You're getting a lab. Oh! What kind of lab? Which breed? Do you know? Frances, you and uh, Maya are close. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, a yellow. Oh, they're so beautiful. And you know what? They're smart as a tack. Seriously. That, you know, there are some dogs that just are, you go, oh, they're just so dumb. They don't pick up anything. And then there are those that are little brats, like my Brian. 
Brian does not listen. Brian only listens when I look at him and go, Brian, stop it. Like that. And he'll go, and he'll go back to doing whatever he was doing wrong in the first place. He doesn't listen. <laughs> but, and if I make him mad, then he's worse. Uh, he's uh, wieners. But Marla, actually, when we adopted him, he already knew tricks. Like, go bang, and he'd lay on his back, but he'd lay up. But, say, I'm losing my eyesight and my hearing, and I don't do much. But and he doesn't listen a lot of the time either. But, you know, you have to have to be pretty stern. I don't, I, I, I've had dogs. I've had Dobermans. I've had Rottweilers. Listen, be, oh, my God, perfect. You know, never had a problem with them. I swear, anybody that tells you that you can get a wiener dog to be 100% potty trained and listen to you is a liar. And they're going straight to the pit to fail. Because I have had wieners. Let's see. Max. Winston, Chloe, Spanky, Brian. There's five I've had. Now I've, and then we had Marla. I've had wieners for years and I've had other dogs. I've had them all my life. I've had mutts. I've had purebred. You know, I've, I've adopted as a puppy. Um, I've never seen anything stubborn <laughs> as a Dotson. And you know, where we adopt, they're like, oh, it's perfectly house trained. Oh, they never do anything wrong. They listen to you. Bullshit. <laughs> Be prepared. You know, you're going to have to have have to have a lot of mean green and obviously clean. And, you know, you, you learn to adapt. Like we keep, like they always have access to outside, which is now better fenced in. But, uh, you know, you have to learn the signals. And basically they train you. So, <laughs> oh, you got a basset beagle. Oh, so it's mixed between a basset hound and a beagle. You know, we I had a beagle when I was a kid named Suzanne, of all things. And um, I would take her with me hunting because daddy let me go hunt rabbits whenever I wanted to and or shoot birds off wires. It was <laughs> farm. But uh, I had a mix that was part Dotson and part beagle and apparently a lot of other things and her name was ginger and oh, i love that dog my brother gave it to gave her to me she was a puppy that a neighbor way down the road um their dog had puppies and he got her and said yeah, i think it was my 12th birthday and she was the best dog and she lived 12 years so i think that's so wonderful irene you know there are so many dogs out there that need to be adopted you know, and then I see people talk about, you know, we're breeding these, we're breeding these, we're breeding that. And, you know, I went with my best friend. Uh, she lives in York, Pennsylvania. We've been friends for God, almost 20 years. And uh, she wanted a Pomeranian for her mother and beautiful, found the most beautiful dog online and everything. And then we got the address and it was in Lancaster, PA. Well, now she was in New York. So we're like, okay, we'll go over there. And I'm thinking it's on the computer. So surely it's a reputable breeder. And the money sure was high. But uh, it was, they were Amish. It was a puppy meal. They didn't let us see the other dogs. Now, I wanted to see the mother. I said, I'd like to see the mother and the other pups. And he was like, well, they're not here. And I was like, and I was like, do you really want to support this? You want to She said, my mother wants this dog. What do I do? When your mother wants a dog, what do you do? <laughs> you go get it. You know, that's, you. it's between a rock and a hard place. And it's really bad because if they don't sell the puppies, and I've been, I, I started reading more about that. They'll kill them. If, if they get too old and they don't want to breed them, you know, because I, I, don't, I don't know. I just... That I know that Chloe came from a puppy mill and we had so many problems with her bleeding and being incontinent. It was a constant thing. And, you know, keeping a diaper on a dog, come on. It's, but we made her comfortable. She was in no pain and she died in peace. We didn't have her for very long, but we loved her. Still love her. But, um, we're on my mods. <laughs> I don't see any blue oh 
He had a Rhodesian Ridgeback. Oh, wow. Now, Irene, aren't those, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm going to have to get, I've got notifications I got to get rid of. That's one thing with this. You get to see the chat, but also your notifications come up on top, like whenever somebody uploads. So, makes it a little difficult. Look at that, Simran. These meatballs are done. The sauce is not thick enough. So, I'm not, that's why I'm not pulling it off right yet. But you see, let me get rid of the tomato. The mayors. See that? That was a perfect meatball. <laughs> Wait a minute, let me get my tongs. Rosie, Rosie was using her tongs, and y'all know uh, I went to fry the pies and burnt the shit out of my little finger and my neck and my ring finger on my right hand and because I could not find my tongs and I was using the wrong thing. Oh shit, this killed me. I wish that stuff kick in. So Rosie's like, you've got to use your tongs. I said, I can't find them. <laughs> We've been in the house six years. Well, 12, 18. Yeah, six years now. And I still can't find all myself. So I said, I'm going to order some. And there are actually two of these and one has disappeared. <sighs> See, this house eats cooking utensils. Yeah. That's a spicy meatball. Doesn't that look pretty? Yes, it does. It looks like pretty. And that's what we're going to do. And then I will make, what I'll do is I'll let the sauce thicken down and uh, just let it sit here. Let it cool to where it's, you want it good. I, I like mine warm enough to eat, but not so hot it burns my mouth. And I just drop, I might, I don't know whether I'm going to drop angel hair or linguine. I think linguine is better with meatballs. But whichever one, I'll do that and serve this. And then I've got to freeze uh, I got to make these meatballs and freeze them so we can have them later. But uh, there, there y'all are. <laughs> yeah, the sauce is bubbling good. I'm gonna, it's gonna simmer down to uh, where it's good and thick, and it'll stick to the pasta. And one of the tricks with pasta, you know, uh, if you've ever worked in a restaurant where they had Italian food or served spaghetti or anything, a lot of times they will uh, they'll cook their spaghetti in the morning and rinse it and put a little olive oil on it so it doesn't stick you don't end up with a big lump and just stick it they drain it put it in the fridge and it sits there with a little oil coating all day and then when they need a serving they go in and uh usually with a gloved hand crab as much as they need put it in a colander to strain and they will pour super hot water over it like if they have water that's boiling or a kettle or um even in the sink, I have seen restaurants just turn the hot water on. You know, the hot water is always higher in a restaurant and just rinse the pasta in the water. And people are like, okay, it tastes fine. But you know what? The sauce doesn't stick to it because sauce will not stick to an oil. So at home, when you're making your best Sunday sauce with meatballs, the thing you want to do is not rinse it. Go ahead, cook it like you normally would, you know, wait till the water's boiling, add a little salt to the water and, you know, boil it until it's al dente, which means, it means uh, al dente is the teeth or to bite. And I'm pretty sure that's the definition. It's Italian. It means basically you want your pasta that way. <laughs> but go ahead and make it, but don't rinse it. And, you know, just leave it sitting in the water sitting like that, then pull it out, drain it as you pull it out. You know, you can use that, or I've got one of those, one of the spoons, it's not over here, but it's like a slotted spoon and it's got the fork on it. Like I remember for Christmas, remember that was, that was one of the things that they had on the creatures, but um, pull it up, let it drain. You know, if you want to let it sit in a colander for a second or two, you know, and let it stay warm and let your sauce heat it and your sauce will stick to it. It's much better that way. Phil, I found you. Where, who is Phil? <laughs> You're East Tennessee. Lord, I, I was just up the road. Yep, the tongs were much easier. I just posted to Twitter how much fun I'm having with you. Oh, well, God love your heart. I appreciate you. You're so sweet. And you know what? I have missed live streaming. And I... 
it's a lot. It, people think, oh, you just open up. Well, and there are people who do that. They just wake up, turn on the laptop. And, uh, that's not me. Y'all know that's not me. I, my husband thinks I'm funny. Here's your meatball. That was good. It looks good, doesn't it? That's going to set to the side. That's going to be a treat for my babies. He looks like something a sheep, cop, sheep coughed up. He needs a trim bath. <laughs> Let me get my Gatorade. Where's my ring? Where'd my ring go? I'm asking y'all like you're here. I took it off. So I wouldn't get it in the meat. There it is. Took it off so I wouldn't get it in the meat, which is a good thing. But my fingers, like today, I can't get that on my middle finger and it fits comfortably on my ring finger. But um my hands are starting to starting to swell some. I'll have to hold some ice balls. I take balloons and fill them with ice, fill them with water and freeze them, and then I can just hold them. And that helps a lot. But um you can see I'm getting fat hands. So you know, my wedding ring won't come off, but then I'll go down. The pasta when I worked at Shakely's Pizza. I must have missed the first one. Y'all are so sweet. Hello from Jersey. Germany. Why can't I talk? <laughs> Where in Germany are you? You're Frank from Hanover, Germany. Well, God love your heart. Welcome. I'm home of Beth. I'm in my kitchen in West Virginia. <laughs> oh. I'm so glad that I have new people coming in. You all sub, like and sub. And my all my stuff is usually cooking related. And we talk advice and all that because, you know, but I, and I do support streams. I haven't done one in a while. Because, frankly, there's been so much stuff going on that I didn't want anybody that was looking for support to get caught in the crossfire of, you know, drama. So I hadn't done those in a while, but I did have a request. I've had two really serious requests. One was to start doing those again. And the other was to vlog my journey with RA and autoimmune disorders. But, you know... I mentioned, and, and I'm hesitant, and normally I encourage everybody, like your mental health journey, your physical journey, whatever you're doing, to vlog it, you know, because that's your story. And somebody else out there is going to have the same same thing going on, and they're going to need support too. So, you know, it's a good thing to do. But, you know, I don't talk a lot. I talk about my RA because you can see, you can see what's going on. And, like, you know, a lot of times I'll announce, I'll be like, okay, came my night. Because the medicines I take make me grumpy and feel kind of crappy for at least 24 to 48 hours. And um, sometimes I have trouble talking. And sometimes I just want to sleep and throw up. But so I'll say on Twitter, I'll say, okay, came my night, warning. <laughs> but I mentioned to Vanny that on um, Vanny G's stream, and I don't really talk about this a lot, that I use a cane. And I'm so tickled. He asked me about my rolling stool, and we were talking about that. And this thing is just great. Woo! <laughs> I can get around so much easier. Um, and he said I didn't. He didn't know everything that was going on with me. And um, I said, Well, I don't talk about it a whole lot. I said I'm afraid of wearing people's ears out. And you know, when you have something like this, whether you know you're whatever you're going through, it feels like if you talk about it you know, often that you might wear your friends out and people might think, oh God, here she is again talking about that. And I worry about that. And they, he and Tucker were like, no, it's the opposite. We need to hear it. Then, you know, people may not say it, but they need to hear, you know, how it is. And I'm thinking, mm, okay. And then I've had a lot of people say, when are you going to do your Saturday streams again? And it used to, if you followed my channel at one o'clock every Saturday, unless I had something serious going on or we were on vacation or something at one every Saturday, uh, Eastern time, 1 PM, I'd sit down and we'd have a support group and we would talk sometimes two, three hours. Sometimes I do two, you know, with an hour break, two hours, then two and a break and then two hours. And, you know, a lot of people have said that even now that they go back and listen to them and they really wish that I would do them again. And, you know, I would love to do that and I would love to do the vlog, but just from telling what I was going on that I was using a rolling stool that I have a cane that I use in the house 
And if I'm having to step from like the vehicle into the doctor's office, if it's a little longer, I'll use my walker. And when we go on a trip or something, a lot of times I'm in a wheelchair and I have a wheelchair, you know, we keep it in the vehicle. And just by opening up a little bit on his streams, I have heard so much bullshit. Y'all have no idea. I have I had people say, you can't even stand out in your streams. Well, yeah, I proved I could. And, I, you know, I can't stand up for long. I have to have support. But, you know, I've had people say I had Munchausen's. I'm like, you don't even know what Munchausen's is. And, you know, I've had other people call me lazy, say that I was, oh, you're just using this for attention. No, I don't want attention for the things that I'm going through. I mean, yeah, I have, you know, trigger finger. I have to sit on a stool, but I want to, there's a lot more to me than just, you know, RA and fibro and diabetes and Sjogren's and Hashimoto's and you know, the list goes on, but I am not my illness. I'm Beth, Mama Beth. And there's so much more to me than just that. Now I might go ahead and take these wonderful people's suggestions and vlog what's going on um i'm not sure i want to talk about it every day and i'm certainly not putting it on this channel i have a separate channel a vlog channel but i am going to start doing my and my support streams again because i've had too many people ask and say that it was important to them and if i can help someone then i want to do it because this isn't about me this is about others you know i'll share what i know and uh what i enjoy whether it's crafts or cooking or mental health. And, you know, it's, that's what, that's what I came here to do. Uh, you know, and laugh, you know, and sing. <laughs> An age violin is better than young. It sure is. Are you getting hit on, Irene? I do believe you are. <laughs> Jessica Eris Puto. You could trump LSI. <laughs> I know what puto means. <laughs> I love you, Stewie. Oh, honey, I'm 48 years old, and I I've had people say I don't believe you're 48. I have the one woman who seems to be really zeroing in on saying you're not 48. Well, I'm not showing you my birth certificate. <laughs> you either believe me or not. I don't give a shit. But you know what? I've never lied about my age. And I'm not going to start now. And I think it's funny. I don't look 48. Do I look 28? Do I look 30? Do I look 35? Because I know I don't look older. Especially when the people, it's always interesting. The people that come at you the hardest are usually insecure for the very same thing. You know, if you're going to attack someone's looks, you must be insecure with your own. You know, I look in the mirror and I'm happy. I'm happy. I know who I am. 48 years on this earth, I know exactly who I am. And I want other people to be as confident as that. There's no sense in attacking people for, for looks, for their age. You know what? An aged wine is much better when it's uncorked than a young one. Right? All right, now I'm going to turn this down. Start to thicken it up. Oh, it's going to be so good. My husband's going to enjoy his dinner. Oh, I've seen in the comment section that you are older. I know. <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, then I, you know what? Say I'm 70. I look good for 70, right? <laughs> you know what? But I'm not going to attack anybody's looks. And, you know, the fact that someone attacks mine and my age, that says more about them than it does me. So I'm all right with it. But I've been married 19 years with my ex. And have been with number two 15 years. That's wonderful. Irene, you know what that says? It says that you're good at relationships and very easily loved. Because you you know, I've had three marriages. I divorced the first one. And it was both of us. We got married young. Second one passed away. And um, that was, that was some mess. Uh, he was 37. And I met the love of my life, you know, third time's the charm. And I've had relationships in between, you know, and it's, I, I don't, I am so glad that I'm not single and on the market. 
anymore. It's it was it's a lot of trouble. And if you go out with one person and you don't really hit it off and then you go out with somebody else and they want to take you out, it's just, it's a headache and a hassle. I love being married and I love the man I married. You know, see, I was smarter. I was smarter this time. I married, I married a man who had, who ticked off everything on the checklist. And, you know, he, he treats me better than anybody ever has. And he knows me better than anybody ever has. And I know him. And that's, and I love him. If you can say that your husband or your wife is your best friend, that you can tell them anything, and that you find them sexy, they find you sexy, you find them funny, and they find you funny. You know, if you match on all these things, that's, that's the recipe for a good marriage. I didn't have that in my first one. My second one, I had some of the things, but it wasn't, it wasn't like it should have been 100% of the time. Definitely not. And, uh, but my husband now, if we even disagree on something, we're laughing in a few minutes. I was, I was grumpy this morning. Lord, and then he went and got me a biscuit and I shut up. <laughs> and he helped me clean the kitchen. Uh, oh, Irene, listen, this, this is cotton. And I have a little bleach in my dishwash in my dishwater that I keep in the sink. So if it bubbled out on me, see this is at a low simmer, and it's not like I'm cutting tomatoes or doing a whole lot of stuff. So um, all this is thickening up so pretty. Y'all see that? Mm. Oh my goodness, look at that! It's getting good and thick. Anyway, um, so I can dab. You know, just take the dish rag and put it in the sink and just dab if I did get anything on me. But I've done real good. Y'all know I have uh, a problem with white sweaters, right? I'm kind of addicted to white sweaters. Okay, I, I bought 15 in September. They're all white. I, I, it's like a holy grail thing with me looking for these same sweaters. And I, I got to shopping, and, my, and it was like every day two and three sweaters. So kind of my husband's going, "What have you done?" I said, "I bought a lot of white sweaters." And he was like, why? You have, that? I said, I don't have the right one. I'm still looking. <laughs> and, and like, I like this one. I think this is <sighs> J. Crew or Talbot's. I can't remember. I, there's a lot. And they were all good brands that I was buying from. You know, I was going to all the different sites and I all had discounts and everything. And I bought too many white sweaters. But that's all right. I'll wear them every day. And if I mess one up, then I've got more to spare, right? <laughs> oh. Stewie, you're so cute. The girl is going to trap me. Wait, what? Oh, Stewie, I need to know your love life. <laughs> you're so cute. He'll get picked up. I look 35. Oh, oh, thank you so much. I'll take 35 any day of the week. That's 13 years younger than I am. You know what? I wish I felt like I did when I was 35. Woo! Thank you, Stewie. I appreciate it. And sweet baby, you're exactly right. And, you know, people hear what they want to hear when, you know, you're talking. Like, I could talk all day long about different things that I've experienced health-wise in the last, let's see, maybe 12, 13 years since I got my initial diagnosis of, uh, we think you have diabetes. And thank you, Sarah Quill. Killed my, pan my pancreas. I sued the shit out of you. But I uh, am one. But, you know, now I, I'd rather have my pancreas back, please. What are we eating in the stream? We have made, doll baby, you're going to have to go back now. I'll have this up. And I'll have the recipe in the description. We made meatballs with sausage and hamburger and all sorts of spices. And I made homemade, homemade Italian tomato sauce yesterday and I had my big pot and it was so it was so good just delicious and I bagged it up and this is the last of it that's not in the freezer <laughs> and we're having spaghetti and meatballs or linguine and meatballs and uh let me read the recipe <laughs> Steve Yoakum just texted me y'all I love Steve to death he's one of the best people he's he's one of my favorites um, he said, I represent Brian and Marlette that insist three meatballs each, so pay up. <laughs> They're going to get meatballs, I promise you. 
little buggers. They're so funny. <laughs> okay, let me read the rest. Everybody's, all my notifications are going through. <laughs> Look at this. Here it, it says one after another after another. Thank you. I'm seeing seeing everybody stream, um, sharing the stream and hitting the like. I really appreciate all y'all. This I have missed this. And I have, y'all know I can edit for crap. But and I the Mac's got, it, this laptop, it's the MacBook Pro something. I computers and all that stuff I'm not really great at but I'm trying to learn iMovie and I have a vi two videos that I want to make um they're funny so if I can get them if I can get them done I'll have them up pretty soon hopefully I may have to get somebody that's a computer genius to help me but we'll see let's see yeah Clancy I'm, I'm reading back a little bit Clancy yes there was a woman who's I look 60 and that was so funny. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Sweet Meadow's story has been convoluted. She's been called a liar ever which way but loose. But I I watched her and I didn't pass judgment. I didn't know her when all this was going on. But um, since then, we've gotten to know each other. And we've talked and I've listened. See, if you listen to someone, you can tell whether they're genuine or whether they're lying. And there are still people who don't listen. They don't want to listen. And there's, you know, but once you understand what she's been through and what she's going through and what's happening, um, and you listen back to what she said then, the story never changed. Never changed. And people try to make a change, but that's why we're friends. Friends listen. Friends understand what one another's got going on and uh you know that's why I, I say if you don't know her story then don't pass judgment because i know her story i've been listening and we've talked one-on-one -on -one. let's see Irene, thank you so much you know we have things that we go through thank you sweet man oh you're so sweet um you your name fits um that new girl is going to trap me. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not what people call you. It's what you answer to. And that's, you know, an old saying. And then Medea brought it back out in the Tyler Perry movies. You know, that's one of the things that she said. And that's true. People could call you a liar all day long. <sighs> How many times have I been called a liar? Oh, you're a fake. You're a fraud. Whatever. You're not affecting my paycheck. You know, <laughs> I'm still doing what I do. And, you know, but people get angry when you don't, when you don't bend to their will, when, when they can't upset you, or even when they do upset you, it's like a victory. If upsetting someone makes another person happy, if the person attacking is a troll and all they care about is just talking crap, making somebody unhappy, what kind of life do they have? That's sad. You know, I have my ups and my downs and, you know, days that I feel better than others. But I try to laugh a lot. Y'all y'all know in this kitchen. Uh, okay, we're going back and forth in Spanish. And you all know more than, <laughs> than I do. Of course, Stewie, Stewie's fluent. Um, and it looks like Zartar is as well. Yo no entendere English. Yo necesitar English.com. Oh, you don't speak English, so you have to use a translator, English.com? I got that. Why, oh, why? Yeah. Hey, Patrick. There's my Patrick. I dropped the F-bomb for you. You want me to do it again? <laughs> I can do that. There's Robo. Hi, sweetheart. How much cheese you get from the lawsuit? Okay, well, I'll tell you this much. I bought a Corvette. I, I paid off my debts, bought a Corvette, um, paid, I guess, most of the wedding. And we had a good big wedding. We were one, it's all wine featured. And put the down pay, put my part of the down payment on this house. So, good amount. <laughs> my pancreas was worth some money. <laughs> yep. F-bombs for Patrick. 
I love it. Uh, Patrick's always so encouraging and you know, I really appreciate it. That's a friend. And he, he has told me when I screwed up, he's like, you need to stop the drama. I want to be the sugar baby. Well, you need to find, you need to find you a, a woman who's single. I'm married and, uh, I like to spend money too much. You need to find a woman who has got a lot of money and likes to spend it. But see, if I was single and I had a bunch of money, I would be a great sugar mama. I just like buying stuff. My daughter, I, when I buy something for myself, I buy something for my husband or something for my daughter as well. So that's the kind of woman you need, Stewie. Somebody that you can love too and who will love you back. And you can give some of them too. <laughs> of course. Of course I do. You know me. <laughs> my husband takes care of the finances. He makes sure he's makes sure we're all right. Yeah. Because I might spend all of it. <laughs> but it's all right. We got good earning power. That's the thing. You have to know know what your budget is and uh, try not to overdo it, which sometimes has been hard for me. But he's a he's a genius when it comes to numbers and finances and money and investments and he knows his shit. So Sunday sauce, great name for drama Sundays. Yeah. Y'all see my oogie boogie? Y'all know. Oh, I got to show you this. Y'all know I love Nightmare Before Christmas and I love cookie jars. Well, they made a ton of cookie jars, but this is one of my favorites. Now, there were two oogie boogies. This was a less expensive one, to be honest. I could not find the other one. It was not available anywhere, and I have searched and searched, if y'all see it somewhere. But this is my oogie boogie. How cute is that? You take his head off and you put cookies in him. I have all these cookie jars and no cookies. I need to make some cookies, don't I? I'm going to be a wonderful grandmother one of these days. I am going to have cookies in every jar. And I got a lot. But that's my buddy. And the other one somewhere, we, we put up all the cookie jars that weren't Christmas related. Well, my husband did. I asked him to. And I said, I just need my nightmare before Christmas. Hey, what did you do with the other one? Baby? I bet he's asleep. He's in there watching football. But anyway, my other one. What did you do with the jack with the one we decided to put out of Jack and Sally? Oh, oh, come around this way and just hand it to me. Thank you. Now, oh, I've got a trigger finger going on. I don't want to drop it. Okay, this is a Westland. And oh, this is one of my favorites. It's my Jack and Sally. See my red hair? My husband's thin. And there. Look at that. Spoop. There, pretty much. But I love them. Zero. Why do I keep calling the dog Spook? I'm an idiot. <laughs> Zero is the dog. Steph, I got started collecting cookie jars. My grandmother gave me one, my Didi. And then I started finding, and I bought my brother. There's this whole story that goes with the cookie jar thing. I'll tell you that in just a second. Wait, I want to check. Where are the Rainbow Sisters at? Um, I think Pirate Jen has uh, a friend over, and I know Crystal was doing, or um, Rainbow was doing something. Oh, she was doing a Christmas tree. She's doing it early. Thank you, Sweet Meadow. Um, thank you, Irene. I love, I love, love, love my cookie jars. I, the way I got started on it was when I was taking care of my taking care of my grandmother. She had told me that I know you all seen the one that I have that's got a butterfly on top that you grab the butterfly the top on it. it's just a round kind of canister one and uh she said now that's yours she would always tell me that every time we were in the kitchen that's yours she would do that with a lot of things in her house she said when i die that's yours and i don't know if you have any uh older people in your house that do that but i always thought that was funny and uh my other grandparents would do that too it'd be not when we go that's yours but anywho when i was a little girl now, I was looking for my brother a Christmas present, to be honest. And uh, he just had my oldest niece. And she was like two. And I think his wife, I don't think she'd had their second child yet. But anyway, uh, you know, I always try to find something really cool for Christmas and birthday presents and things like that. Try to do something different. So uh, when... My, when we were little, I know you all remember S&H green stamps if you're from the U.S. And every time you went to get your groceries, 
however much you spent, they would give you so many stamps and you put them all in a book. And then there was like a catalog and you could buy stuff in it. Well, my, my mother religiously saved food, not food stamps. She had S and H green stamps <laughs> and she ordered the cookie monster cookie jar. And it was 1976 version. And it was from the Henson collection. It was the original Jim Henson stuff. Because remember, you know, Sesame Street had just started. But my brother's favorite character was Cookie Monster. And I used to call him Cookie Monster because he's a fat little thing. You know, they called him, we called him Buddha when he was little. He's so round and fat. He's skinny marathon runner now and looks like Tom Cruise, only better. But yes, I'm bragging on my brother. Makes me sick. And he's conceited. He knows he's good looking. But anyway, so I was like, when it, when we were little, I hated that cookie jar because I was so jealous. You know, mom spent all her green stamps on him, a cookie jar. Now I love Cookie Monster too, but it was David's, you know, it was pointed out to me. So I was not happy. <laughs> and I'll be honest, I went to get cookies out of it. I broke it into a zillion pieces. He cried. My mom blamed me for being jealous. And I said, oh, oh no, I wanted one of my own, but I didn't mean to break this one. And it was like a whole trauma, like big drama and trauma in the family. So I was sitting, eBay was just getting started when this all went on. And, uh, you know, I, I was playing more on the computer because I had more time. And so I got on eBay and I was looking around and I thought, oh, wonder. And, you know, I found that cookie jar. And I bought it for him. And I thought, that is the coolest thing ever. And then I bought another one that was non-breakable. Because when I got him, it was ceramic. But then I got one that was, um, I think it was rubberized, maybe. Or, you know, like rubber duckies, that kind of feeling, that kind of stuff. I guess it's, is it plastic or rubber? I don't know, whatever. It's a rubber ducky. I guess it was a rubber cookie jar. But anyway, I said, this is for her. This is for my niece and I won't say her name. Um, but I said, this is hers. So she'll never have to worry about breaking it. And then I gave him the other one. And I don't think he appreciated it as much as I'd hoped he would. But after that, I started seeing all these cool cookie jars. And I was like, I think, and then, Daniel, my husband and I were dating and he started buying them for me. And I've had friends, I had a friend buy me one that's shaped like a pocketbook. And cause you know, I'm shoes, purse, jewelry. I'm the girly thing. I have, uh, all the Disney ones that I wanted. I have all the princesses. I have all the evil Queens. Um, it's just real cool. It's something, something to collect. I have a lot of McCoy. Um, and if you've watched my channel, you know the story about the Angel Mama one. And, you know, it's just something neat. And I love bringing them out at Christmas. And anybody who visits, they always comment on them. So it's just a fun thing to do. And I change them out with the holidays and stuff. But, uh, yeah. So, and I'll have, I'll bring out more of, more of my, you know, Nightmare Before Christmas ones. Because they're so cool. I mean, I just love it. And, you know, I made the wreath. My last video, uh, I made that wreath and I'm making two more. I'm sending it to Pirate Calypso and Rainbow. Uh, I told them I'd make them each one, but then I felt like crap. So I've got all the stuff on my dining room table. We're eating in the den, which we brought the new coffee table down and it's marble top. So it's easier to take care of. But uh, yeah, I got a lot to do. <laughs> it's fun though. Oh, you have a teapot collection. And your coffee. I'm a coffee drinker, but I collect cool, like my mugs, you know, see these. And I have them with wieners. Anything with a wiener on it, I like. But I have teacups, like, uh, what is it, the Royal, whatever. There's uh, there's all sorts of them, but my DD, the one my grandmother I took care of, she collected all sorts of things, like piano babies. I have a whole collection of piano babies, the little ones with the blue nubs. Little, little naked babies that you're supposed to sit on your piano. I have the little ones. I have the big ones. I have German babies. My bedroom is full of these figurines. And, yeah, it's a pain in the ass to dust. That's why I hire someone. And then I have the teacups over there. And my friends have all sent me teacups and saucers. I don't use them to drink tea, but that's our thing. Now, at my, when I married my husband, we said wine and tea. 
you know, if you didn't want, if you weren't a wine drinker, you're, if you don't drink alcohol, you're a teetotaler. So we had little cups and saucers together and we put African violets in them. And that was, that were, that's how our flowers were. And then people could take them home with them. And it was, it was kind of a cool thing to do. It was something different, you know, cause you always have these big arrangements and nobody can see through them at the tables. So we just had in front of like each plate, you know, a little tea cut and saucer with an African violet in it. And usually a bottle of wine between every, everybody, except for my father gathered them up and started doling out who could have wine and who couldn't. That was funny. Last time I was in the cookie jar, I got in trouble. What was that song? Who took, who took the cookies from the cookie jar? Not me. Yes, you. Yes, you. Not you. Then who? Who took the cookies from the cookie jar? My daughter used to sing that. That was a Barney thing. Drove me batshit. Uh, uh, I would love to have teapots, though. I think I only have two teapots. It's just a lot of cups and saucers. Your mom had them, and she let me put them. Ah, that's wonderful. Can I do a banana cake? You know what? Um, Get on my Twitter and DM me and remind me. I've got so many requests to make stuff. I'm going to make a cheesecake coming up. My, my spring form pan was messed up. And I ordered one and I was so mad. I ordered one from Amazon and it was a good brand. And it got here yesterday and it was a bunk cake. It was not a spring. I was so mad. Oh my God. I tweeted about it and then I wrote Amazon. I was like, Rrr, you sent me the wrong pan. I need this for a cheesecake. Not. I don't make buck cakes. I don't even like a buck cake. Really, I don't, I don't like pound cake. And so I guess we'll have to go to the store and just buy one instead of ordering it. But um, I'm going to make a cheesecake. I got to season these skillets. What else? I, I'm going to make apple dumplings because those are really good for Thanksgiving. I'm going to make some pumpkin bread. And I've just got a lot of stuff coming up. And I love to cook and talk and sing. And I haven't sung yet on this string. But um, I don't really have anything in my head to sing. <laughs> but anyway, it was. Wait. Hi, Lisa. Oh, no. I hope it wasn't too big a clean up, doll baby. Hello, lockdown. How are you? Hope you're having a good evening. I hope everybody's having fun. You know, we've had a decent amount of people in here. We've got 35, 34. It goes up and down, but we've had, I don't know, maybe 75, 100 in here. And that's good for a cooking stream on a Sunday afternoon when football's on. Because you know what? This is going to be really good tonight. It's, um, it's filling, but it's not fattening. You know, I don't eat a lot of pasta. And the meatballs are good. And, you know, there's not a lot of fat. There's a little bit on top, but with homemade sauce, I don't put oils in it, so it's all the goodies. And just remember, spices, play with your spices. Spices don't have calories. So, oh, I trigger finger. Ah! <laughs> That's crazy this time. I need to drink more Gatorade. Hang on. I'm going to spill my Gatorade. I'm going to have orange all over my boobs. Okay. This is just about perfect. Okay, see the size of my meatballs. And I am going to save some for my brine and for, uh, where'd Marlette go? Did, is Marlette in there? Yeah, he's in there. Okay. Well, I have thoroughly enjoyed my time. We've been on here an hour and a half, and I think that's a good enough. Um, I gotta go check on this other pot and get it scrubbed out so I can boil, you know, the pasta and get that all done. Wait a minute, Clancy says I'm drinking a Texas-made vodka called BJ Hookers and playing. <laughs> That's wonderful. You know, we we get wine wine from different places. You know, before I found out that I'm not supposed to drink because I've got. Wilson's disease and it affects your liver and it'll make your liver swell. So you got to be real careful every now and then I might take a sip of wine or something or, you know, if there's a good mixed drink, I might have just a little bit, but between gastric bypass and the liver condition, I'm not really supposed to, but we have the most fun since we started dating and we're talking 10 years. 
I guess it's, uh, yeah, it's like, um, right at 10 years. We started collecting funny named wine bottles. Like there was bitch, there's evil, uh, which it looks like un upside down. You turn it and it's live and the evil. And by the way, don't buy bitch wine. It sucks. Um, I want to get a bottle of Marilyn Merlot to add to the collection. We just keep them. And I'm thinking about it. Some, some buy like several and we'll keep a bottle back and then we'll try it out. And then we save that bottle. And I'm thinking about making a light fixture. I saw one and it looked so cool. They had all the wine bottles and they had the labels on them and they just had cut the bottom out of the wine bottle and turned it upside down, turned it to where the bottom you could see just enough. Or there was one that it was right side up and there was one that it was upside down. But anyway, you put these little the little lights in it and they're bright enough and then you wire it just like you would a lamp and you make a wire form course to hold all the bottles on but it was the coolest thing ever I was like oh I need that I need to make one of those so yeah Stewie you like brandy or scotch or cognac but that's what I want to do for there because I've got I found a chandelier an antique chandelier over here my everything in here is going to be uh, black and light gray and white with a touch of red because and the red accent I can take you know go burgundy to red or I could just change it all together if I get tired of it but um I found the chandelier there and it's red and it's got the you know the crystal crystal danglers little danglers <laughs> but anyway and I love it I need to put a bulb in it because it's not lighting up now but uh we have that and but I'd like to have the wine bottle one in here. I think that'd be cool. But hi, Landon. You are. <laughs> Thank you. I'll take that. This is. Uh, <laughs> you're talking to a lady who most friends, most of my friends are gay. Gay, bye. I don't care. Doesn't matter to me. I love everybody. Everybody that's nice to me. So. <laughs> but if you're gay for me, does that mean you're female? Lisa, you need to investigate. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. Well, thank you. Put a picture up. Let me see who you are. <laughs> uh, but I'll take that compliment all day long. Thank you. Stewie doesn't drink. Okay, well, you, I know what you do do. And it cracks me up. I can hear Stewie on there. He'll be... <laughs> <laughs> and, and then he gets the giggles and it's wonderful if you all aren't subscribed and I think everybody in here is except for anybody that's new um, go sub to Stewie's channel and he's got evil Stewie too and that's all Mama Bear stuff and uh, who is not me I get called Mama Bear and she gets called Mama Beth so it gets switched back and forth but he, he gets clips it saves you watching really long live streams like seven hour live streams, he gets to the good part. <laughs> then I get in trouble. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. <sighs> That's so cute. But yeah, I wanna do the, I wanna do that. And then, um, you know, we've got to paint. And I have painted all my life. I, my, my mother was one of the, she, OCD about the house, like literally. You could pull anything out in the house that would never be any dirt under anything or beside it. I mean, and I think they repainted er throughout the house every few years because she wanted everything crisp. It had to be perfect. And of course, being the oldest kid, guess guess who got to do it? I got handed. I mean, they draped everything and pulled everything out, and they'd be like, "Go do it," and you know. And I learned to do it perfectly. And I mean, I could have been a painter's assistant probably when I was 12. But anyway, I'm looking here and I don't want to paint upstairs because it's this gorgeous color. It's like a dusty mauve that is very, very light. And um, it's just very soothing. That That's perfect in there. I want to do the den down here in the hallway because it's, it's this 
very, very pale. It's not a pastel. It's like baby yellow. I hate yellow. I'm a redhead. I don't wear anything yellow. But in here, it's this green, and it's the it's not the old style green like they had in the 70s. This is the new style, and or the new shade that was popular a little later on. I think it was probably in the 90s. I hate it. Don't want it. We had celery green, harvest gold, and uh, what was the other one? Harvest gold. The, it was green, yellow, and orange. So I didn't like that growing up, and I don't want it in here now, so we're going to paint it. But I wanted to get my pots, and I've got to do the cabinets. Cabinets are going to be black, and I think black enamel is what I'm going to go with. I think that'll be pretty. Uh, Landon, <laughs> yes, pant. I love pant, uh, brick pant. Are you talking about you paint? You like to paint? <laughs> oh, Patrick, listen, you did my heart so good uh, listening to my Smule songs and liking them. I don't know if you all know the app. It's S-M-U-L-E. And, yes, I'm on there. It's my best world. And, uh, you know, I, I really enjoy singing on that. I wish I could put it uh, to the laptop because it's a Mac 2 and I have an iPhone. And I can't, it won't do it on a laptop because I have a really good mic. And um, I have this blue whatever that I was recommended. But anyway, uh, Yeti. Yeah, it's a Yeti mic. that I'm so proud of it. And I'd love to record some on my laptop. But I don't know any app that I could put on the my Mac that lets me sing. I've been looking. And this mule doesn't do it. I do it on my phone all day long. But um, let's see. <laughs> Patrick, do you have a song? And I'll play one from uh, this app. I could probably do that. Hang on. Damn my hands. He's li I think you've listened to about all of them. Oh, you like to paint, Landon. Well, honey, I would put you to work. I'd give you some paintbrushes and paint sponges and, uh, you know, drapes and some of that blue tape, blue painter's tape, but I'd let you go to town. <laughs> Because this needs it here. It really does. Honey, you can have a meatball. Here. Here's one for Irene. Where's my tongs? What are you whining about? What are you doing? All day. He's got the den door shut. He's in there. There you go. There's yours, Irene. <laughs> Come on over. I'll make a bigger pot. You know what? While I'm sitting here, though, I could be rolling the rest of these, and I should. But, um... I don't know. Criminal. All right, I'll put that one on. I'll hold it up to the mic and see if you all can hear it well. <laughs> Honey. I know he's got me on on either his phone or TV. Honey, you need to come let the dogs out. He can't hear me. Oh, there he is. Okay, he's going to take the dogs out. Okay, let me find it. It was so, the biggest compliment, he said, is that really you? I said, yeah. So, let's see. Now, got some funny songs on here. Um, I guess I better say, for copyright sake, this is me singing on the Smule app, S-M-U-L-E, <laughs> on my account. This is not anybody else's stuff, and... You can make videos with this, by the way, and upload them to your channel. So I don't guess that'll be a problem. I hope not. Let me just get down to, there's Criminal. Okay. If you haven't used this app before and you've got an iPhone, and I don't think they have it on Android, but if you have an iPhone and you love to sing, definitely get this. And I should be sponsored by them. <laughs> oh, Irene, honey, anytime you just come on over. <laughs> I'm live luck for London. Oh, so do you, you have a channel, Landon? If you have a channel, we'll sign up. We'll, we'll go watch you. Okay, I'm going to play this. Can you all hear that? No, it's not. Wait a minute. This thing. I don't know what I did, honey. I can't get the mic. I can't get the mic to pick up the, the good one. 
I've got that. I hear your little toes. Check. Why isn't the Yeti pin in that? There's the gang. Let me up the gang a little bit. It's like it's not listening to me. Oh, well, I'll just play it. Patter wants me to play criminal. I guess I better turn a vine up. Okay. I'm just going to hold it over here. You know what? Wait a minute. I know what I can do. I've sent these to my to my email. Hang on just a second. I will open my email up. And play it on the laptop and hopefully, hopefully it'll, you can hear it better. Okay, I've got that. I've got a lot of people watching older videos, which is great. Okay, now let me send this to my email real quick and it'll come up and then I can play it. Okay, it's sent. See, I'm not good at all this technological stuff, but we'll see. Okay, tell me if you can hear this. Cause he's all I am, 
Okay, <laughs> that was my version of criminal. And if you go to the Smule app, then uh, you can find me under My Best World, and you can follow me on there and hear some of the silly things I sing. I sing with my daughter. You can't tell us apart when we do duos, but uh, if not, be a YouTuber. Boobs. That is all. You know what? Obviously, you haven't seen that horrible clip. <laughs> me wearing short shorts with my flabby ass because <laughs> I have a big butt too <laughs> and I don't care you know um I was very sick and let me tell you when you're getting ready to throw up you move faster than you normally do but uh, yeah I had an apron on so you know like I look bulky and bulkier in the front and my ass is hanging <laughs> and I don't even care you know we all do things you know encore encore thank you I love you guys. Thank you so much. You make me feel so good. And I'm glad you enjoyed that. But like I say, go on the Smule app. Meet me here. You sing all sorts of stuff. I'm, some of them are terrible. And you can sing. There are other people that I've met on here on YouTube that do it too. And, you know, we it's a lot of fun to listen to other people. Uh, it's just, it, it, it's a joy. I miss singing with the band. You know, I've always, I always sung on stage in one way or another, and it's just, it kind of fills the gap, you know. But go to, go to the, go to the site, Smule. It's an app, and uh, I'm so tickled I found it. And I've gone through more headphones, uh, trying to find one that, you know, and learning how to balance your sound because I'm not a sound engineer. Now I have a, uh, my daddy's first cousin is, and he's really good at it. I mean, he works in Bristol, Tennessee, and Virginia. But uh, he goes all over and he does all sorts of different shows and works with different groups. But uh, I know very little about it. You know, I just know turn the gang down <laughs> when you're breaking the speakers. But the rolling stools, that's right. Me on my rolling stool. <laughs> oh, all right, y'all. Um, I see. I, I had to delete Rose, but, and I hate that. She can't behave. She gives a lot of money away, though. God love her. She's been she's been hurt, so nobody be angry with her or anything. She's done a lot of wonderful things trying to help people out, and she's gotten crapped on. And so she didn't like me anymore because I told her I said, "Quit giving money away." You know, you're giving money away, and these people are taking advantage of you. Uh, one couple took money from her to go on vacation in her city. And I won't say, I won't give that information, but you know what? She gave them enough money to travel. They said they hadn't been on vacation in years. She said, come here, you know, enjoy. Just have dinner with me or have coffee with me. And they blew her off. They took her money. They went on vacation and they blew her off. So she's a little bitter. She's given to about every cause and every person who's asked. And she's been very sweet to a lot of people who've done her wrong. And I'm not going to say anything bad about her. So the ladies in the drama community, She'd have a sing-off instead of all this. Hey, you know what? That that would be wonderful, wouldn't it? I mean, I would do it. You know, uh, the porch had karaoke. I agree with how that turned out. There were there were a couple people who did original songs, which doing original songs is fine. You know, the problem with doing that in a karaoke contest is nobody knows the song, so they don't know if you're singing it right or wrong. So it's really hard to judge. I'll I'll allow that. But, um, you know, if you're singing, going from, like, letting people sing acapella, like, I can sit here and go, um, just call me angel, 
of the morning angel. Just touch my feet. Wait a minute, not my feet. <laughs> Before you leave me, baby. I don't have any effects on. There's no, so that, like, what you heard me sing there, that has uh, some effects. I don't put a whole lot, I don't put a lot of delay and you know, reverb and all that on it, but. <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. B Natural. <laughs> Except for the galloping gourmet. Um, yeah, uh, you know what? That's okay. I'll take second place. <laughs> uh, but yeah, just touch my cheek before you leave me, baby. I mean, like, I can sing like that all day long. I mean, I can sing with a dr almost dry mic, if you know what that is. You do sound engineers, engineering. Um, and I have a very powerful voice. Like, I could literally be on the other side of the room and you would hear me because when I was trained, I was trained to be on stage and hit the back of the auditorium or coliseum or whatever using powerful voice. And I'm very lucky to have that, but I've worked all my life on it. But if you compare that to someone who's on, like, this app and got all the, you know, bells and whistles on and they're still a little off key and they win. Now, the lady who won... She needed the money, and I think it was I think it was nice that they gave her money, but I don't think she should have. I don't think it. I don't think the contest was as fair as it should have been, and you know, and I I get along with them, you know, fine. But I think it would be really nice to have some musicians judge. And you know what? I could host that. I wonder if if you're out there watching, and I know every drama channel is going to be watching because everybody watches to see what I'm going to say, to see if they say, "Oh my God, she said this. She said that." You know what? If you're a drama channel and you're interested in doing a sing-off, you know, um, you can challenge each other. But I challenge. I challenge so-and-so to a singing duel. How cool would that be? And, you know, it might lighten the load a little bit up. I would absolutely super chat a sing-off lobster. Yes, that would be fantastic. And you know what? Maybe it would lighten everybody up some. And, uh, I'll, I'll have to think of a prize. You know, I'm not big on, I mean, oh, we could do money. I mean, that's fine and dandy. I mean, we can give away a monetary prize. Or I could find something cool to give away to the prize winner. Or, you know, you all can go off each other. Like if two people came out and said, I challenge, one says, I challenge so-and-so to a sing-off. And another person says, okay, uh, whoever wins has to give the other person 20 bucks. Or five bucks. It's just a matter of when, right? How cool would that be? Oh, Stewie, I would just love that. Thank you so much. Post it on your channel. And if anybody wants to do a sing-off, just, you know, if you've been tap, 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 yep, and that way, you can sing. So if you've got, if you want to try it, if you want to do it, practice, let me know. We'll, I'll get people to sign up. And uh, we'll get it all together and we'll figure out how we're going to do this. But how fun would that be? And there are a lot of really good singers that do YouTube. And, you know, you don't get to hear them sing as much because we're talking <laughs> or arguing <laughs> or making up. But, um, you know, that would be fun. Just, you know, if you're having beef with somebody, John's just sing off. We need a neutral judge. We need to find a neutral judge who is a musician, who has a musical background and an ear. Um, I could do it, but if I'm running, it's going to look like you did with the porch that I'm picking favorites. I'm not going to do that. We'll have to get a neutral judge. Patrick could do it. Patrick is neutral with it. Everybody loves him. Okay. Put it on your, put it on your channel, Stewie. Anybody else, please take that clip. We're um, making the offer, put it on your channel and, you know, think about who you want to challenge. Think about what song you want to do. Um, I guess we'd have to open it up to any genre. So whether you're singing country, rock and roll, blues, whatever, um, I think it should be judged by difficulty of the song. Some songs are so much easier to sing than others. We all know that. Okay. Um, some are like singing Mary Had a Little Lamb, and some are like singing Criminal. Let me tell you, that's vocal acrobatics to do that song. It's just no shit. But uh, it would have to be difficulty of song, you know, performance, technic technical performance, like 
if you're on key through the whole thing, if you know the words, if you're singing them correctly and in the correct phrasing, and then showmanship. Because what fun is it if you're not if you're not having a show? And if you're on here and you've got a channel, you know, it's just good practice, you know, to sing and you know, have it all about you and show off your talents. And Sarah, you know what, Sarah Burchett, oh my Lord. Let me tell you, I didn't like Sarah very much at first, but I could not deny her talent. Now, I don't think that she, it would be funny, I know somebody she's got beef with who thinks slick and singing. Whoo, that girl's got some pipes on her and her, it, she, you can tell she's very well trained and very well practiced and she's on live me if you want to go listen to her. She's also on YouTube and uh, she also made a naughty song about me in parody. <laughs> it's okay. But you know what? If she didn't want to participate, she would be a perfect judge. But, um, Jolene, 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 I'm begging of you, please don't take my man. I do that one. That one's on my smule. <laughs> These meatballs are gorgeous. Y'all shut up. Those poor meatballs. Listen, see, I, fudge. Y'all think I'm kidding. This is no fun right here. <laughs> it's like getting a crab finger. But um, yeah, I've turned it down to low. Turn it to off. God, that's not stop. So, okay, if you notice, there's a, it's a little darker on top. There is some oil that has come out of the meatball. Okay, can anybody tell me what the secret is to getting oil that's on a stew or anything out? It's, I'll give you two tricks. Oh, I love my dolly. I will sing on my Camille. Are you saying, oh wait, I think you're using toxic text and it's not doing it right. You mean you'll sing acapella without any music? That That is much harder than people realize. When you sing acapella and you don't have music to go with it to help you with the phrasing, you have to get your phrasing right, check, all of it, and then perform. So you can sing acapella, you can sing anything you want. And um, nobody had the answer to how to get a little bit of oil off the top. Paper towel. All you do, and I'll have to find mine because we've rearranged everything to have a laptop. But uh, you just take a paper towel, fold it, and just touch. And it will absorb the oil before it will water when you get it out. Um, so bright, I guarantee if you follow my recipe for meatballs, you will understand that these are amazing. And they, there's nothing cool about them. They're good. <laughs> They're gonna be good. Okay, and the other tip, uh, if you wanna join the singing contest, all you have to do is get in touch with me. Uh, that way I know I know who's who's interested, who's not. You can get me at Mama Best World, same as my channel, at gmail.com. Or you can get me on Twitter, Mama Best World, the number one. At Twitter, and you'll see it says Mama Beth Official. But uh, then, let's see, that's the easiest way to do it. Do those two ways. Do it through email and do it through Twitter. And just, just DM me, and I'll make a list of who wants to participate and uh, what genre they want to do, what song. You know, you can, pick, you can take your time picking out a song because I always change my mind. But, um, okay, does that sound good? Chat disconnected. Oh, shit. Why is my chat disconnected? Let me see if I can get this to go back. I don't know why it would do this. Let's error try again. Okay. <clears throat> No, it's not letting me do it. So my chat is disconnected. It still says that I'm live. But once again, if you want to get in touch with me, all you have to do is contact me on Twitter or by email, and I'll be happy to get in touch with you, and uh, we can get it all lined up, and we'll figure out some way to do some prizes and maybe give a little happiness back. Okay. I'd like to see my friends all get along, and even my enemies get along. I hope I don't have too many enemies. There's some people that don't like me for no reason, but that's okay. That's okay. Please, everybody. All right, I'm going to get off of here since I can't read the chat. I don't know why. 
But uh, anyway, I hope you have a wonderful evening. Thank you for visiting with me. Thank you for coming to my kitchen. And I love you. You love you. Bye.